Namaskar and a very good evening to all. This is Arpatar Shrivastav Rai welcoming you all to this online incubation women entrepreneur program for girl students under the aegis of Root to Bloom and Atmanirbhar Bharat platform. Well, you know that this entire incubation program has been created with an intention to enrich you all in your respective fields so that you can set benchmarks. Well, as you know today we have selected one of a very interesting topic for you all dear learners and that is it fi uh, filing for the e startups so i still remember someone has rightly said that the hardest thing to understand in the world is the income tax and as you all know according to the income tax laws filing the return and updating your idea status is mandatory for every individual or entity where income exceeds the threshold limit mentioned in the income tax act of 1961 with that intention i'm very happy and glad to have with us the ca ms jamna shukla ji with us who will be enlightening us with this topic before i invite her as a guest speaker on board let me give you a brief introduction about her well as i had said she is currently holding a position of a zone secretary of all india federation of track practitioners north zone of india since 2018 also a senior partner of harshukla and associates faculty holding also a position faculty of ici varanasi bram of for cmsc and oc and she hails from mumbai and has done her studies from bombay university bcom and has also practicing as a chartered accountant in varanasi since 1993 and the uh, remarkable thing is that she is the first practicing ca lady of varanasi well she has served to many organizations and currently holding multiple positions in different organization a member executive committee of all india tax practitioners of 2021 founder trustee of varna seva trust she has also been a past member for jila ganga samiti and member of jila parivartan samiti patron of deva foundation former indian treasurer of world women awakening organization former head of legal advisory committee of chandrashekar foundation of up varanasi cell women co-winner of bvp kashi prant and also a member of beti bachao beti cell of varanasi of pradhan mantri narendra modi ji scheme well as she has been associated with, with multi pal organizations as i said earlier so these were some of the uh, organization which i highlighted the most important thing which i would like to highlight is about her honors recognized by honorable shri narendra modi ji for her plantation and environmental activities best zone secretary for all india federation of tax practitioner 2018 she's been also awarded with shakti samman rani lakshmi samman kashi ke kohinoor samman kashi gaurav alankaran jal ratna samman and numerous as such also honored by rotary varanasi for her contribution and the up gaurav samman so with that all the honors we welcome you on board with us ma over to you thank you thank you arpita ji for introducing so nicely a little correction so that i was former zone secretary of aftp not zone but presently i am a secretary general Uh, mitle it is a national uh, designation for a uh, whole country as a uh, whole secretary general of aiptp but it was really wonderful the way you introduced really you are you are always such a sweet person to do everything because i have been associated with you uh, since long we are in touch with so dear friends really first of all at the outset let me congratulate uh, pradeep ji arpita ji i have seen manya ji even uh, other team i might not be knowing and uh, associates are also there i really appreciate their uh, this efforts who are uh, running this 
wonderful program of learning really i am learning in fact not uh, you have launched it for women and uh, girl student but i am learning i will go through the whole uh, lectures once i will get time two or three i have been to so it is really very good very good speakers very brilliant mean legends you are bringing to this platform i am nothing before them first of all let me admit it and really i learned from them and uh, one more thing of what i wanted to appreciate is this efforts continuously you people are always there in time really I, because sometimes i see are time has already gone when i see uh, in clock are 5 baj gaya ab to i miss today's program so it happens with me but you people are at time and you are doing great job congratulations and really it is commendable job and now for uh, this uh, atmanirbhar bharat learning program uh, today uh, i given the topic uh, income tax return itrs in short form i will say itrs for startups so let me first uh, share my this uh, ppt then we will uh, continue it thank you thank you everyone for inviting me uh, pradeep ji whatever it is yeah. all of sudden you <laughs> honor for all of us actually to listen you and uh, uh, help us on this particular stage in fact it is a learning for me also so that's for all for all of this yeah 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 then every day i am also learning because of these speakers coming in and actually giving uh, the even i did uh, last week of varanasi now i had to miss i requested them please i can't be offline because i have to be here so it happens since it is online so it is very easy yeah okay now it is visible okay my yeah, it is, it is. yes it is ma'am income tax uh, because this uh, this is in very short form so i will explain all the abbreviation so no need of worry uh, for dear students who whoever is present there or in future they may go through who, they will be going through so i will uh, explain all this abbreviation because it will be difficult otherwise for everyone so itr heading already i am given so what is income tax return first of all income tax return has to be filed by someone so who are they someone they are not only single person we have in the income tax act these are the entities these are the personality these are the persons who need to file the returns so for so who are they they are individual me you anybody single individual then comes hindu undivided family huf in short it is always it will be mentioned in our portal also huf then aop association of person many sometimes like uh, samu uh, you know samu accounts you know in village women's form for uh, collective efforts so that that will come in aop association of person body of individuals also in samu also comes in this also others uh, some many people if they like clubs if they come together and do something that is body of individual association association of person sometimes uh, what happens ki partnership firm we are all aware ki part, what is partnership firm then two or more people come together and do some business and they get themselves uh, uh, governed by some deed or they may registered they may not be registered they are governed by some deed then it is called partnership firm but if there is if there is no any deed or something like that uh, they mutually come together and do something then it is called association of person and then partnership firm we are uh, all aware ki ha there are this is a firm we all normally come across this uh, common word in our society means here two or more people they register they form a deed they uh, Uh, right mention over there all the uh, the way they will be doing business and they the way they will be sharing the profits through partnership did they govern their business so it is partnership firm now companies we all know ki what is company it is it may be private limited company it may be public limited company companies has to be incorporated in mca portal so it is because of uh, i can't go in detail how it is to be registered and all and then comes another entity trust and ngo oblig we all uh, have heard about this ki what is trust and ngo so these are the seven forms entities who need to file the return and uh, if you are doing some business you may have any of these uh, entities individual can also do business as a startup as a entrepreneur they can do hof can also do aop is also doing 
even trust can do business there should not be any confusion you can have startup in the form of trust also see now i will further explain how it is startup startup also there are two varieties uh, two categories i will uh, just explain it so these are the uh, main uh, status we in income tax language we say it is status what is your status my status is individual my status is huf in form it is mentioned as status you have to fill over there ki i am huf we are association person or we are firm or company now next comes what is itr first of all I, first i explain who who we are who, who what we can be as a uh, entity wise now what is income tax return it the itr is simply the it is a form in which we declare our total income and after claiming all the deduction and exemptions and tax thereof means simply it is a total uh, summation of whatever income we have from many sources are there and uh, next top, uh, heading i have given how to compute income see now i told ki it is summation of income but how to calculate those income it is important to know so there are five heads in income tax under which we have to cal calculate our total income and what are these heads we all know the first head head is salary income then income from house property ifhp i have written uh, we all uh, may have rental income it is very lucrative many people uh, just uh, they uh, invest in a house and uh, flats they buy many flats too on as uh, income as rent then capital gains very common in all the files whatever you sell if, if you sell shares if you sell house if you sell any land property whatever capital asset if any asset you sell you always attract even um, this mutual funds and all whenever we get it withdrawn earlier not in time then also it attracts you sell shares then also it attracts capital gain income and then income from business and profession it is very common we may have profession we may be a doctor i am a chartered accountant and uh, i may be a business person i am doing a, i may be service provider whatever it is a business and profession income fourth head is income from business and profession and last is income from other source ifos so the five heads i explained in this five heads only all income falls in this heads only and the basic uh, the one more point to be noted is over here is ki, uh, sometimes it is very difficult to decide in which heads particular income has to be uh, posted then in that case you uh, you may take that income in income from other source it is a residuary head means if it is not coming if uh, any income is not coming in other head then you have to put it in ifos plus there is see this is not the end although see what arpita you told is very right a uh, topic i am given is itr very simple kehne ko to it is very simple but really income tax is never simple see now five heads they talk about five heads you have to take your total income in, in this five heads only but there are deeming provisions which makes income tax so tough i will tell you and deeming provision means there are so many provisions so many acts we can do uh, unknowingly which may be deemed as income and that is taxable in income tax that's why i have written iofs ke baad mein likha deemed income if any that's why for that purpose you have to always go to your chartered accountant or your tax consultant legal consultant he you always disclose your all the affairs all bank statement all selling all investment all buying whatever you have you just disclose you ex, uh, inform to your uh, legal uh, advisor and so that he may um, find it out if there is any income which is which attracts deeming provision so it is very important to be very much open with your legal uh, consultant your chartered accountant your tax uh, advocate whatever it is so deeming provision you people won't understand because it is not uh, apparently in monetary terms it it is calculated by putting some criteria which we uh, know and it is very difficult and i need not uh, explain it here but you can always ask uh, your uh, consultant ki sir is there any deeming provision also i am following in 
So this is just I wanted to draw your attention. Then after adding all this, uh, uh, we may have some investment, some exempted income like PF interest. If you have investment in provident fund, interest income on that is fully exempt. It is not taxable. So we have to deduct those exempted items and some certain deduction we are permitted by income tax uh, that we will take care. And even in the form also, they have uh, given all the headings. When you will uh, connect on or uh, login on to portal for returns, what returns you have to file, I will be explaining a little later. See, there also it is mentioned very beautifully. Everything, when you read, you will get, come to know, okay, I have these things. So you have to just simply put the figure in that column. So uh, uh, you add and get uh, deductions if you have any in your pocket, uh, anything in investment like LIC deduction, we all know we get tax uh, uh, rebate in that. So the, all those exemption deduction, whatever is deducted and whatever comes after that net income on that tax has to be paid. Very important thing, uh, I want to draw your attention of you all that unless you pay tax what on net income you arrived on net income the way i told you now whatever tax is coming on that you have to pay within due date whatever due, there are due dates i will be explaining little later and you have to pay within one or two day or before due date that tax then only this return will be accepted by portal so it is very important tax has to be paid within due date otherwise you won't be nowadays earlier we used to in offline system we used to file and uh, we uh, used to pay later on with interest and all but now uh, return computer online system doesn't accept those returns so be ready with your liability of tax so I think I'm clear with what is your income, how it uh, get taxed. Then uh, you need to know one more thing uh, about assessment year and financial year. Means what is the income of which year you need to file return? So what is assessment year? Suppose this year, uh, April uh, 21, and March 22 is coming, uh, cl uh, closing is coming. So April 1st, April 21 to March, 20, uh, 30, uh, 22, March 31st, March 22 is your financial year. Means you are working in that working year, financial year. That will That is called financial year. And for this financial year, assessment year will be 22 to 23. So now the this year already we have filed for 21, 22. Now the returns will be filed. Now whatever ITR I am just explaining uh, in future you will be doing, it will be for assessment year 22, 23. So when you will be filling form online, then you uh, they ask for which assessment year, then you will have to write assessment year 22, 23. And financial year is 21, 22. Am I clear? Please, thoda, thoda, um, uh, yes, no, yes, no, bolte ye, ji. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I have one doubt here. I have one doubt here. Yes, yes, yes. I, sure. we actually, we went for this financial year, a different one, and uh, assessment year, different. Why it is so? Yeah, see, assessment has to be done for some previous acts, na? Okay. Your previous acts, always assessment is done in next year. So how next do you year. assess your income? It is very, very simple, very basic. So assessment year is always a start from the end of the financial year. But yeah. you take it that way. Yes, one more thing. Since you asked, so I, one thing came in my mind. Uh, sometimes you may have, uh, like uh, in America, even some MNCs are having their financial year, working year, from 1st January to 31st December. So in that case, you know, uh, they have to prepare for the, if they are to be, because they have uh, subsidiaries in India, uh, or they may have some establishment in India, but they have to prepare from April, because their accounts get uh, prepared for one year, January to December. But for India, they have to uh, calculate nine months over there and three months over there, those two balance sheets they prepare. Because India, um, we have uh, accepted in income tax uh, closing uh, is April to March only. Uh, but people may have different financial year. What I mean to say, 
people may have different financial year but accordingly you will have to prepare through nine months for uh, your you, according to company you will be preparing nine months separately three months separately and uh, by adding to uh, for indian say you have to add for 12 months like this only so they may have to, they may fall for two financial years unka a jayega in such case earlier it used to happen in india also but india may not gradually everybody it almost it is made compulsory ki financial year should be april to march ending only but in uh, mncs uh, it may not be necessary and uh, as a start up we can have any entity even we may have to work with uh, mncs also so we need to know this so i think i am clear regarding uh, yes of course to this yes yes of course yes now uh, now yes now income the, uh, now by this time we are clear ki if we have income we have to file returns now let me first uh, elaborate about how many returns are there actually yesterday pradeep ji you just told me ki itr1 itr2 itr5 but today when i will be explaining then you will come to know ki how i in fact itr1 and 2 for start out it doesn't come into picture only how but you will have to know first so there are seven itrs already i have mentioned in first line itr1 to itr7 now what is itr1 it is also called sahaj very simple sahaj nami name itself is depicting means it is very simple and uh, <coughs> sorry uh, uh, for uh, before uh, explaining this i would like to draw your attention regarding in income tax it is very complicated i can't go in detail for residential status you may there are three status you are resident you are you are ordinary resident but not ordinary resident one is resident and you may be resident but not ordinary ordinary resident and nr nris you might might have always heard about ki ha nris hote hai to non resident indian wo bhi hote hain there are three uh, category of our uh, status personal status entity status to isme bas ab itna hi dhyan rakhiye कि वी ऑल आर रेसिडेंट इफ वी स्टे इन इंडिया फॉर इन ए पर्टिकुलर ईयर मोर देन एटी वन एटी टू डेज मीन्स यू आर ए रेसिडेंट यू मे बी ऑर्डिनरी रेसिडेंट नॉट ऑर्डिनरी डोंट गो इन टू दैट बट नॉर्मली यू आर रेसिडेंट सो जस्ट वॉट वी से ना कि एज्यूमिंग दैट वी आर ऑल रेसिडेंट बट रेसिडेंशियल स्टेटस यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट इफ यू आर ए इंडिविजुअल नॉर्मली so you have to calculate according to the your stay days number of days you are staying in india and abroad so there are very difficult uh, some other day we may take a lecture for that how it is decided but simply i have written since you are resident that's why i explained this much a uh, uh, itr1 for whom it is applicable it is for resident individuals only and whose income include pension income income from house property having only one house if you have more than one house itr1 cannot be submitted by you and if you have income from other sources excluding lottery income and run horse uh, races income running horse races uh, is a business if you that falls in income from other sources although it is a kind of business but it falls specifically it is mentioned that it will fall under income from other sources if you have horse running income and lottery income then also you cannot file itr1 otherwise other for other uh, income from other source yes you can file and if you have income agriculture income less than 5000 you can opt for itr1 but if it is more no you can't opt and person having income overall total income more than 50 lakhs also he can also not go for itr1 and capital gain if you have any kind of capital gain you can't so because it is uh, not it is a um, uh, for very basic and uh, ordinary income people uh, and any one having capital gain or higher income uh, bracket, uh, bracket they, uh, they are not uh, allowed to file itr1 so it is sahaj for small bracket very pensioners and uh, some uh, interest income people this uh, return has been made and if you have any investment in unlisted shares not listed they are saying in unlisted shares and if you are a director then or if you have any foreign asset or any foreign income also 
it may be 5000 10000 whatever it is or you may not have if any foreign income but you may have some property in foreign then also itr1 you cannot although you are resident and you are india your, your income may be less than 50 lakhs but if these conditions are there then you may not opt for itr1 so it is clear only other sources agriculture income less than 5000 and only one house property income salary and pension pensioners can file this itr1 subject to restrictions i mentioned now what is itr2 then comes it is itr2 itr1 is i think clear now yes. second form is itr2 who can file it now little uh, enhancement is meant residential uh, individual plus huf this is allowed to huf also the first one is not allowed to huf it is only for individual but you if you you know huf uh, if you are you all will be knowing but uh, very common it is whoever is uh, going in uh, income tax planning they always have their family file hindu undivided family so they can opt for itr2 and whose total income includes salary pension income from house property you here you may have more than one house property income that is allowed and income from other sources including above restriction whatever restriction is in uh, first itr1 that has been abolished in itr2 and also extended to huf but is me kya hai but cannot if income from business and profession itr1 may be if you have income from business business income hai ya profession income hai you cannot opt for itr1 itr2 as well if you have income from business and profession so you cannot opt for uh, itr2 so pradeep ji now what i was telling you ki you told ki ma'am uh, itr1 and 2 and 5 so are you clear ki itr1 and 2 to entrepreneurs ke liye bana hi nahi it is not made for them am i clear yeah yeah <laughs> So even you know we people also know everything but when we read in detail now so many things click uh, again it revives recapitulation Why? yeah it is recapitulation because what happens in uh, our old practices you know we just keep on filing already said things are there just we start no thinking and all things things change a lot so but uh, i'll going through now so many things i liked very much while going through all these things why no. i was discussing on this ipr 4 or 5 yes, because usually coming. usually uh, those who are inter startups they yes. do understand about itr 1 that is for individual and itr 4 but they don't know about exactly how exactly this is been implemented or this is been used sir it is really difficult even charters we have to just uh, read and uh, uh, advice because uh, so complicated you will come to know Literally, gradually you must be seeing how many conditions are oh. there how so many restrictions are there even in itr1 even itr2 but yeah income tax is really beyond uh, anybody's reach to understand I mean, to have a full confidence ki, i know everything nobody can say it so now itr3 itr12 is clear Yes, First yes. is individual, second is individual plus HUF, but no business income. But where so many relaxation is there in ITR2. So it is always go better to go for ITR2, what I suggest. Uh, now IT, ITR3, it is available again to only individual and HUF. Again, it is. But it allows income from business and profession. Plus all above other income what earlier bola na, ha, income from house property whatever is there in itr2 may income from house property other sources capital gains everything is allowed in itr3 Lekin, yaha, dekhe, again it is see what you were saying uh, just now ki itr3 they know Aray, sir itna asan nahi hai. itr3 may be it is restricted to individual and huf only Whereas normally we were, um, we enter into entrepreneurship, normally it is, it may be individual, then ITR3 is very, of course, it will, uh, ITR3 will have to file, but normally we form some partnership or we form some companies or we form some group like a LLP we may form, 
we may form a association of persons like that something so itr3 won't be applicable but if you are as a entrepreneur as a starter as a startup you are uh, going individually or on on behalf of your of your family that is huful how huf is met your consultant will uh, advise because it is really very tricky also then itr3 he can opt for otherwise it is also very uh, restricted in very restricted uh, entities only individual and huf so clear itr3 but it allows everything at even business income to individual and huf only and all other what uh, what is there i mentioned in itr2 now comes itr4 this is also called sugam you know sugam it has been kept like sahaj hai it is sugam for business income and now how business income they have made it sugam and other than llp here they have widened the uh, entities uh, uh, benefits individual huf partnership firms other than llp limited liability partners other than llps they can opt for uh, itr4 and why it is called sugam sugam is ki if you are doing some business suppose it is uh, your turnover is below 2 crore and uh, you don't want, want to maintain your books of accounts it is very really cumbersome starter of business uh, he has to so many formalities are there uh, accountants problem and everything so government act, income tax act has provided this benefit that simply whatever is your turnover according to your gst bill you simply uh, minimum 8% declare minimum 8% uh, profit on that and pay tax on that if you are willing to pay that percentage whatever is prescribed in that for service sector it is different uh, and there are certain conditions in this also this percent for this percent if you are fully doing your digital business then percentage is reduced to 6% and if you are hybrid system you are uh, billing your uh, business then uh, there is 8% like that you have to uh, service sector little bit different uh, ratio is there so uh, if you want to uh, you don't want to maintain books and all all this lafda then you can simply pay 8% or whatever percent is there that is called presumptive income ki government has allowed you ki minimum you pay you, you, even you can pay more if you have more uh, profit you can declare that but minimum at least you have to pay tax on that so whatever you are declaring minimum to more you have to pay tax on that and simply forget books and all so it is sugam that's why it is called for sugamta of entrepreneurs businessmen or anyone even individual huf anyone who is doing business and want to take benefit of this so itr4 has been made here audit is not mandatory in other case itr3 audit may be there may not be there but may be there but here almost in uh, itr4 uh, there is no audit. no need of going to audit your even though you are having your turnover more than 1 crore but less than 2 crore so am i clear itr3 and itr4 sugam uh, yeah. pradeep ji i think yes, there yes. is no doubt yeah? madam you mean to say that uh, suppose somebody is a proprietor going as a proprietor yes so uh, he or she should go with itr3 please yes he may he may even go if he is uh, see if he here also itr4 also they are, they have mentioned individual huf ha to yahan bhi you can go but presumptive taxation ek specific cheez isme dal diya they have put in presumptive taxation this is altogether under section 44 ada to isme uh, in and if you are opting this section not then you have to uh, means uh, fix you are not maintaining any books in itr3 you have to maintain books and all everything get audited also but itr4 may up to 2 crores if you don't want to maintain books and all but it is always advisable to maintain book although it is not compulsory in this case not to get accounts audited then you can uh, file itr4 we have this facility okay so proprietor should here, here here fix percentage of income uh -huh. you have to declare फीचर <laughs> 
proprietors would go for a ITR for so come uh, with a preservative. Yes. Uh, um, yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. ITR four is advisable present with presumptive income tax. Just presumptive. I that's why I have written in capital letter. And uh, but uh, you know, always we get it audited because nobody shows that much income. The first year already, already they are running in loss. Huh? You are very meager profit. So what happens? We go for audited account. In audit, uh, that is ITR three. We have to shift uh, shift to uh, ITR three because normally people don't go for presumptive. What, the practical uh, scenario I am explaining with you normally. Uh, but we also have taken uh, in few cases uh, presumptive uh, tax, but otherwise normally people get it audited because if you show less than uh, this presumptive uh, rates, then you will have to government uh, our income tax access that you get your accounts audited by a chartered accountant. So if you are coming under the audit, then ITR 3 will get. And why I audit is there because if, suppose you have one crore of turnover in first year or second year, and you are showing profit less than 8%. And it happens, first year you may even run in loss. So normally people show a little less percentage of net profit I'm talking about. So if you show even 6% profit, I will have, you will have to get your accounts audited. And if audit, then idea three. Is it clear? Clear, clear. The basic difference is this percent wala lapda hai, minimum taxation wala lapda hai. Ye. Has to be, huh? Has to be. The baki, uh, that's why in general, in common, ITR 3 is submitted by everyone. Uh, but uh, if, if one is uh, declaring more income, to aag ban karke ITR 4. Then uh, ITR 5, it is applicable to, up since, upar to ho gaya HUF and uh, partnership firm uh, uh, ITR4 may only for Sugam, only for presumptive. Now, especially other registered partnership firm, because there is no partnership firm, uh, is coming in the uh, applicable uh, limit. So now ITR5 is specially for partnership firm and association, association of person, body of individual and LLPs. If uh, these are there, these registrations are there, these entities are there, they have to go for ITR5. Only option is available to partnership firm is under Sugam ITR4. Otherwise, LLP and everything, uh, they have to come to ITR5. Very simple. Firms can be done with ITR5 and LLP also. Then ITR6, very um, simply, it is simply it is all corporates for private limited public limited all corporate except there are section 8 company company like a trust is there now charitable company is there they are formed under uh, latex section is i think 25 but we uh, say it as section 8 earlier because 2013 ke pehle section 8 e company bolte the. and now also some section has changed but simply you just uh, understand it if uh, any company is formed for charitable purpose then that won't be uh, come in this uh, itr 6 it will fall under itr 7 itr 7 is for trust news agencies, research center, like such kind of, uh, basically kind of NGO they are. They are frankly speaking kind of NGO only and mainly trust. The trust can come, NGO can come. Uh, if they are registered, again, if they are registered properly, then ITR7, otherwise they may fall in ITR5, where I have written funds, AOP, higher, AOP, BOI, LLP, otherwise, if registered trust, registered NGOs, news agencies always they have some license and registration, research center, they are always registration. They come under ITR7. So these categories are, are we clear? So section eight, section eight will come under this or uh, it will go under ITR5? ITR7, because it ITR7. is well registered. It is well incorporated. MCMA hota hai, but yeah. it uh, ITR 6 mills ka is not permitted to that because it is a charitable uh, company uh, for uh, public uh, benefits. So ITR 7 they have to because nowadays you know for CSR and all these objects are there now for big corporates. 
so they are forming section 8 company as their subsidiary and all separately also like reliance so her body company whoever is making profit sound profit they have to uh, undergo csr activity you might have heard this is very common nowadays so csr ke liye they are nowadays started uh, they have forming uh, this section 8 companies under that they get it tg registration to ls sab hota hai usme and uh, they are taking the benefits of uh, trust whatever benefits are available section 11 benefit i can say rather section 11 benefits taking companies won't be filing ITR 6, they will have to come to ITR 7 only. Section 11 benefit is trust activity benefits. So in short, ye, these are the entities under which we can even start our business. And uh, as an entrepreneur, as a starter, and um, uh, in general, your ITR may start from ITR 3 to Seven, even trust be entrepreneurship may it can enter into. They can also do some business for the because they also are doing many trusts are doing business and uh, uh, flowing back this profit for charitable purpose only. So there are many things in general. I overview I am saying ki this is how uh, NT, uh, we are we have to choose our ITR forms. So I think I I am clear. Yes, yes. One two is not there at all for entrepreneurs. <laughs> Yeah, that is for single handed that is to be for the yes, as all salaried and uh, one house property, two house property, 50 lakh, more than 50 lakh, put two made all the year. So, a complicated higher group goes made all the This is how they have selected. The Sahaj is simply very low income group, but otherwise, ITR2. Now, who should file returns? Now, the, the question comes ki, uh, there are so many entities. They, you may have income, but are, is it necessary to file return or not? It is very important to know. So, what is the, uh, under this head, what I would like to draw your attention that partnership firms and companies have to always file return in all cases before due dates. Actually, in the last me, third me, I should have taken, but I have taken in starting only ki if you are registered as partnership firm or incorporated as company, then even though you are bearing a loss, you have to file return. And in other cases, individual, HUF, body of individuals, Artificial judicial, Jurisdictional Person, AOP, and return, return filing is mandatory only if they need not file always. When it is mandatory, if their gross, very important word is gross total income is above the basic exemption limit. Basic exemption limit is 250,000 in general, in general for everyone. Individual ke liye bhi, HUF ke liye, body, eh, sorry, AOP, AJP, everyone. So 2 lakh 50 is uh, minimum, just pay tax, we don't have to pay tax. And for uh, senior citizens, it is 3 lakhs. Senior citizens means 60 year to 80 years. And there are super senior, senior citizens also. For them, this uh, age uh, limit is above 80 lakhs. See, one can, they can also go into entrepreneurship. That's why I have to take this point. So for them, if income is uh, their gross total, and now what is gross total income? Gross, yani, like be, before deductions, oh. before all this ATC deduction and other deduction, other exemption, whatever is available in that. Before that, whatever is, if your gross total income is below your taxable exempted limit, then you need not file return. It is not mandatory. Otherwise, it is mandatory. But there are certain ex exam, uh, means exceptions to this. Again, if anyone has, although he may have income more, less than a basic exempted limited, but if he is having foreign asset, any he is earning any foreign asset in other country or any income foreign income then he will have to file and one more condition if he has any deposit in one account or altogether account more than one crore rupees 
See, people may, there may be cases where you are showing income less than two lakh fifty thousand, but you may deposit uh, more than one crore. It happens. It can happen. Suppose somebody keeps in a saving account only, paisa, not making any fixed deposit, so he will have very less income. Hardly three to four percent in general interest may come. Whatever it is, in current as well as a saving account, they have current account also. They have mentioned. I really think it is a some error in drafting or what. But in uh, saving or current account, uh, if your uh, deposit is more than one crore, or foreign tour expenses more than two lakh, or your electric expenses more than one lakh in a year. Foreign expense ka bhi in a year. It may be one year or uh, one tour or more than one two two lakh or more. Matlab, uh, it may include uh, one tour or two tour. It depends. In a year figure they have mentioned it. So if you are fall in such cases, if you have such expenses crossing these limits, then also although you are not supposed, otherwise you were not supposed to file return because your income is less than two lakh fifty thousand or three lakh or five lakh. But if you are incurring this much expenses, then you will have to file the return. Maybe it may not attract tax, but government says you have to file. Uh, you are supposed to file the return. See why I'm mentioning these all these things. If anything is mandatory or not mandatory, you need to know because if you think your mira income to is less than two lakh fifty thousand, I'm not supposed to uh, file return, and you may have these expenses crossing the limit. Then uh, income tax department may issue you a notice, even give you a penalty, and consequences. You know, income tax consequences may come. May start, so we have to be careful. Whenever to when these uh, things are there, you have to file return. And for local authorities, a key exception is local authority. If they are they need not file return, but if their income is more than exemption limit. See what is the difference in second point, this point here it is gross, and here it is net income. Only in case of local authority, like our municipal. Corporation and all local authority, it can be anything. I gave one example here. If your net income here, I have I haven't written means taxable income. If it is more than basic exemption limit two lakh fifty thousand ke upar hai, then you have to file return. Otherwise, you need not file returns. So, am I clear? Ki who who are supposed to file return? You may be an entrepreneur. You may be a startup uh, entity. But if you have these things, if you are having very less income, then uh, you may it may be it may be so that you need not file your return. But it is always advisable to file return. Government has said you need not. But why it is advisable? I will explain it little later. But you have this uh, 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 benefits privilege. Now, when to file income tax returns? There are certain due dates for different categories up to which they should file their returns. Earlier, just starting, we were discussing about the uh, deadlines, due dates, and all March, March, March. We were explaining every year budget changes all the dates. Almost to, after two three years, some there has to be some changes regarding uh, belated return, late return, revised return, something something something, uh, and uh, earlier so due dates kept on extending because of pandemic. I told you for uh, this uh, closing year twenty one, there are uh, still uh, this is uh, on thirty uh, till thirty first March. We are. Given the chance to file the returns, so it is extended. Otherwise, it would have been only till thirty first October. That has been extended to thirty first March. You see the, uh, मतलब we have to depending on the situations we have to the government changes. We also demand we professional body demand for that, and they also keep on changing this due date. But otherwise, what are the due dates in general when everything is fine and good? Thirty first July for individuals, HUF, and not or non audit firms and trust. There are only two things. Uh, third three dates you have to remember: thirty first July 
if you are having no audits then 31st july and 30th september for companies and firms trust under audit audited case 30th september earlier it was october now it has been made to 30th september and for companies having uh, like a transfer pricing or tp this tp is for transfer pricing companies having a, like a global business uh, then what happens ki you have to file a different uh, form for transfer pricing there is another report for that under section 92e for that come for those company who are dealing matlab uh, selling to abroad export of business and all they have, are allowed to file uh, this report 92e up to 30th november so only the mainly 31st july you have to keep in mind and 30th september if you have international business then we have 30th november time for this special because it, that has to be filed for transfer pricing report uh, uh, pricing uh, report has to be filed so am i clear uh, pradeep ji ki when to yes, file return yes. uh, so Kind it means uh, it means partnership firm has to file uh, by 30th of september yes uh, if you are under audit if you are not under audit you may have very meager income hai uh. na you need not get audited because there are very big um, uh, topic of when to get audited when not to get audited it is very complicated we cas also try because law you know sometimes uh, in a very like uh, hurry they change the things half things they change half thing they don't change so it becomes very complicated so it uh, Uh, one more question so you have to understand whether you are under audit or not It, one more question you can simply one mention it one more question out of this discussion yes suppose one any of the entity is going for an audit uh, idr return hmm first year and the very second year then they are going for non audit uh, idr yes for that only i was saying ki there is if i could decide for this very and nice very nice yes for that also that only there is a section 44 ada audit it uh, was simply understand ki you may have to get audited although your turnover is very less but there ha they have the act has made five years bracket ki once first year you have gone for this 44 ada audit then for coming five year you have to get yourself audited under that ye ek bahut bada lafda dal diya hai to wo under that 44 ad category so it is very complicated so you have to just uh, it is a hint for uh, you people uh, beginners that you just make it clear from your tax consultant that you, next year you are under audit or not are you clear got it got it what your question this is the answer it is one of the category now it depends in uh, first year like you said in first year under which section you got yourself audited under for, for section 44 ad or 44 ab if 44 ab is there next year you may not be uh, in audit but if you are under 44 ad then then for 44 ad it is five years bracket once you come into that five year uh, next five years you have to get it audit yourself under that section irrespective of other conditions so it is very complicated don't go into it but hint is there always just you take advice from your consultant it can be anything 44 ab no 44 ad yes any question any more question in this 30th september is clear this yes, yes yes ma'am please go for, move for companies there is no audit and non audit nothing okay. they have to go for 30th 30th september yes maza aa raha hai na mere ko bhi maza aa raha hai why to file itrs yes ye ek uh, simply i have just put it here because uh, we are talking about itr itr itna complicated things we are learning but why to file itr bhai i told you ki uh, you may not uh, file it is not mandatory only set in center uh, if you cross that limit then only you, you have to mandatorily file but if you are below those limits you need not file but always it is advisable to file itr because it helps for reporting our total income or loss to carry forward the loss or claim refund dekhiye first you simply understand why we have to suppose you have any refund although you are what happens ki like lic agents they come to us 
they have hardly income below 250000 but tds is directed on their income and for that tds they claim uh, they have to claim refund for that because they are not taxable they will uh, they are uh, authorized for refund so how you will claim refund unless you will file itr so although it is not mandatory otherwise but you need you should file then only you will get refund so for the claiming refund in the itr filing is must and to carry forward loss what i told it is not mandatory if your income is less than 250000 or you are running loss it is up to you if your loss you don't want to claim this benefit of loss because loss is allowed to be set up from other incomes in the same year from other income if you have business loss you we are allowed to set off it from uh, other uh, income heads but other, other suppose you have three business one business is a uh, profit two business is loss so uh, intra adjustment is allowed even inter adjustment is allowed but uh, it is a very broad topic in general i am saying ki how it is allowed there are certain conditions so but that is allowed in the current year and if it is not set off fully then it can be carried forward to next year but loss to be carry forward is allowed only if you file return and that also not delay return within the due date then only in time you have to just intimate to government uh, of india our income tax bhai log ko that you have you are running in loss means itr has to be filed in case of loss otherwise you won't get benefit of set off in next year and for reporting loss i told you carry forward loss claim and otherwise also itr is very important one should file itr because if you go anywhere to uh, have loans and all even for registration of startup uh, be to startup what is startup uh, i will be coming little later abhi to ye general in general entrepreneurship and starters ki i am talking about unregistered startup ki baat i am coming i am whatever we are explaining in general what happens to all how uh, uh, provisions are there what is uh, for all but uh, for uh, otherwise for startup there is special registration uh, we need to have our income itrs always in our hand so whether you are it is mandatory or not it is always advisable to file income tax return every year i think it's okay and if we don't file return up to due date then he may be levied delay interest see this is the benefit of first point is benefit first point is benefit now uh, what are the threats if we don't file return up to due date then he may be levied delay interest penalty from 1000 to 10000 there are certain uh, they, conditions and criteria over here which may extend up to 10000 and uh, 1000 se start hota hai but if income is less than 5 lakhs then they have uh, restricted this penalty to 1000 rupees lekin there is penalty agar aapka um, suppose you were supposed to file a 5 lakh ke be, uh, below hai but you are filing it late although it was not mandatory but you wanted to file it if you are filing it late then 1000 penalty will be levied so aapko in time hamesha bhari otherwise penalty is there if we fail to file return then income tax department may issue notice many or times it happens like in itr to uh, earlier i explained ki who should file uh, itr 1 2 usme tha na ki 2 lakh se upar aapka uh, if traveling expenses is more than 2 lakhs 1 crore deposit is there uh, some other thing was there um, electricity bill is more than 1 lakh in a year if you are falling under those situations then you have to file your return although you have no income and if you fail to file no tc is going to come to you because everything nowadays it is on digital platform everything is well connected with income tax department annual information system is there you have to draw it from portal government has provided all facilities in case you forget your all this condition all these circumstances government has given very good pl platform uh, annual information uh, system that is portal is there ais we say so you go on that you just check you just enter your pan or aadhar card number you will get to know all your big transaction 
and if you see any such transaction which attracts filing uh, which necessitates you to file the return of income you do file return otherwise penalties provisions and many very very harsh provisions are there for higher income group even i have seen uh, uh, in our uh, one of the case there was hardly 50000 uh, Uh, as uh, evasion of tax hardly 50000 they had to even face imprisonment you can understand if income tax apne pe aa jata hai na he can do what he can do you won't understand so much litigation so many litigations things and adversities you have to face so always a simple thing he didn't file he he was just unaware ki because of this provisions i was supposed to file the return ignorance you nowadays na you can't escape from so am i clear so it is very important to file income tax return now next is how to file returns it is very simple i think return uh, aspect i have uh, covered reasonably covered i think and now how to file returns which returns you are calling it is clear why you should file clear under which category you have to file it is also clear now how you can file in two ways offline and online almost it is online but for few people like it yes ahej wale they can uh, go for uh, offline also just how it is done uh, download uh, download from the portal this itr one and fill offline then uh, generate xml file this is all technical computer uh, operators job xml file then upload it again on bluetooth portal ultimately you have to upload it but you can down uh, you can fill it after downloading it you need not set uh, online but this is the only different and this is not complete if you are doing uh, this offline uh, submission for sahaj it is permitted for others it is not permitted permitted nowadays then you have to uh, send it to cpc for verification also within 122 days in online this uh, process is not necessary but if you are doing many people are like senior citizens they do offline so if you are going for that so aapko by courier you have to send this uh, hard copy you have to get it printed hard copy acknowledgement only and send it to central processing center which is at bangalore waha pe verification ke liye we have to send it so that you have filed return and uh, itr1 if for super senior citizen or in ke liye and if however if there is refund again you cannot uh, file uh, uh, offline if uh, for induced uh, if uh, you I mean in case of refund you cannot if you have any refund then you have to file online in short this is what they are and otherwise always go for online but since one facility is still alive live for offline that's why i explained otherwise always go for online and all enter all the data applicable form just you have to log in to and you will get uh, all uh, tabs over there itr number 1 2 whatever you want everything is on the board so you have to select and fill it accordingly so offline and offline little uh, explanation about that uh, so i think um, uh, pradeep ji uh, it was a general uh, scenario for uh, itrs how it is applicable when it is applicable what are the deadlines and for all kind of entrepreneurs and businessmen starters i would say now specifically startup i wanted to uh, just cover up in this because it has little different feature than general categories you may you are start you have started here, there is a if you are new, you have new business you are a entrepreneur even startups are entrepreneur but you can say yourself startup only if you get yourself registered under startup india portal then only you can claim that is registered startup then only you can uh, have the benefits of startups and there are so many be- benefits of startup basically your this learning program is i th- uh, what i understand is to encourage this startups only and really 
we need to encourage them we should have india should have more and more startup because we all know what america is today because of their startup uh, big largest means america is number one to have startups then uh, china is there but uh, israel china both are uh, ahead than india at least then we are coming kyu then we we yes. may be at fourth i think yeah third but uh, israel because china's data is not in picture israel data is there but uh, so israel ko log say second as per uh, status we are third but there are two uh, countries those who are second and uh, of course us is first yes so uh, china and uh, israel i think second mm -hmm. is it uh, correct sir china china and israel on uh, the number 2 number 2 anyway numbers uh, actually don't go on google i had also collected uh, data from google that was not correct but i appreciate pradeep ji deepan sahu's lecture i couldn't uh, go through fully but uh, he has uh, mentioned very correct figures about the status of uh, this startups in our earlier lecture he was there because, because see deepan ji is uh, sitting at aict <laughs> So huh. AICT is getting the correct picture across uh, universities, whatever the startups are coming. So he he is getting a bigger picture actually. Yeah. As compared uh, to us. I just hope uh, it it should be a very correct because uh, now I have to understand because in uh, one of my budget session, I had taken data from uh, Google, Google and that was totally misleading. If I compared it to Deepan Sahuji's data, so uh, it was very miserable. Awkward uh, condition for me. Ki, uh, One thing is there. Uh, Deepan ji's presentation is uh, more is towards there? education, more yeah. towards education establishment. That is why the variance is there. Yeah, what I mean to say is that Google data are regarding the startups. They are not giving clear picture. Uh -huh. It is not correct at all. Now, like they said, we have in India ten thousand uh, startups. Whereas he said only four to five thousand. So how much variation? This much variations. Uh, it means uh, uh, Google figure is not. And these people have very authentic figure. Now they are coming from. Because uh, Jaman ji, he was referring <laughs> in regard to the colleges. He was what he was actually referring is. Hmm. We have somewhere around fifty thousand colleges in India. Hmm. But out of those fifty thousand, only those many numbers are there which are actually running as an IIC or the startups in their establishments. Hmm. So he was referring that point actually hmm. that this variation is there. Huh. Okay, I I would like to have his number afterwards. I will ask. Uh, okay, him, okay. Uh, so that I will discuss with him exact position. So whatever. But what is startup? Unless you are not a startup, unless you get register, you are startup. But to get the benefits of there are so many bad benefit to startups that you can avail only after getting yourself registered under Startup India portal. And uh, there is a uh, what I have written here: General Statutory Rules (GSR 127E) defines eligibility criteria as follows for getting registered uh, yourself as startup. What is that? That they should be incorporated. See, now they can change how things are changing. What earlier in general I told. Now starters they were also for uh, it was all applicable to entrepreneurs and all. Now they should they should be incorporated as private limited or registered as firm or LLP. So to get yourself registered at startup portal, you need. to be you should be either incorporated as company or as llp or registered as firm only three categories are allowed to be registered as startup and turnover should be less than 100 crore in any previous financial year so if uh, anybody existing business also can go for uh, can register itself in startup portal us there are subject to conditions i will be explaining little later but they should not have turnover more than 100 crore in any previous financial year this is the condition and an entity should be considered as startup only for 10 years if you are uh, want to take benefit is permitted as startup only up to 10 years from the date of your uh, registration as startup on the startup portal 
it should be working towards innovation what is startup how can we say ki it is a startup how when they permit you to be a, a startup registered entity when they allow this registration is that it should be working towards some innovation or improvement of existing product or services and processes and should have potential to generate employment and create wealth so it is very interesting innovation no because basically this startups are meant for innovation see more and more innovation as today china has uh, uh, covered the global market because of its innovation such beautiful innovation every time see whatsoever we say at the time of diwali but their lives special features attracts us and we tend to buy that although we don't uh, just think in a we don't want to buy a chinese product but they attract a lot so so innovative they are this is what we want in india so that we can also capture the global market there are i am talking about lights many other features they burn in water means their lights come which light in water what they, these things and even these sensor lights we are still lagging behind i am just giving simple example of electronics there are many other fields kitchen items our kitchens are fully loaded with chinese item because they are so innovative so helpful to do our day to day business so indian we entrepreneur this platform i am very thankful that people should entrepreneur should take it very seriously they should go through all the lectures how to form and be innovative and these universities also encourage these uh, innovations means ki how our people should do it bring innovative things useful things so that we can not only uh, enhance our wealth our uh, generate employment but we can also globally capture the market in america when where you go to visit i had been to there in walmart every item was made in china sir i was just surprised ki america mein what i am doing in america why i am buying to things in america because that is also available in indian market malls so everything sir 95% only 5% i found 5 to 10% i can say made in america otherwise all things useful things attractive things were made of even jewelry cheaper jewelry were also from made in china so this is what china is there so much innovative when they captured the whole market of course america has some innovative in technology they are more innovative in high high machineries big machineries but in small and general use item china has really wonderfully done as a startup and that's why india is uh, taking all these endeavors this atmanirbhar bharat and all to encourage these startups we need to unless we will be after that we won't achieve our this 5 trillion economy is not possible without this innovations and and they have a oblique what here i i, I am bringing my person improvement of exist, existing product and services or processes see this is very uh, tricky to understand ki improvement of existing like net all the companies keep on uh, improve their products little bit see maruti car is coming next year the model same maruti alto comes with little different model that is not a startup uh, effort actually it will be said only the uh, uh, startup uh, innovative things or change in existing product when it will create additional uh, employment or additional wealth existing in little improvement will be not but since they have written here improvement of existing product but that has to be understood very clearly how it is to uh, this improvement has to be there it should be a create a new market new wealth new employment new ideology new demand in the market then it may it may be uh, registered in startup portal then only they will permit you you will have to prove it to and uh, yes i think uh, this point is uh, clear then what are the benefits of a startup you uh, see how you can get yourself registered i uh, explained it in, uh, in our, my earlier slide now benefits of startup what is, there are so many benefits first of all it is very good for country if strongly if it is successful the, it is going to uh, create wealth and increase our gdp and all plus has self free registration through mobile app its registration is very simple even on mobile app you can register yourself 
and no labor inspection for initial three years. There are so many complications for beginners. Otherwise, if you are not registered as startup, then every year inspectors come, they put so many objections and other department objection. But here, they, they facilitate you very much. They support you. They don't interfere much. And funding support worth to put 10,000 crore uh, is already kept aside for uh, strengthening funding to our startups. Then credit guarantee fund uh, scheme is also there, which is government uh, kind of government backing, which uh, takes a responsibility of some guaranteed uh, guarantee to support fi them financially. Then 80% rebate on patent application. If you are patenting anything, then 80%, whatever charges are there, 80% rebate is there. In context, release for three years. That is very important. I told earlier, there is, you can have this startup uh, status facility for 10 years, fine. But what happens is uh, you are given income tax relief for three years only, out of that 10, 10 years. And it is very wisely uh, uh, drafted because in initial years, nobody has that much profit. If they would have given in initial three years, then it would not be a justification for them, that it would not be a real help to them. So in starting what happens, he normally one can have loss also, one can have a very meager profit also. So gradually, gradually, uh, or uh, since they, if you have loss, you can also take benefit of set off. So starting four to five years, if you are running business, you come at break even and then to profit. And when you have profit, earlier losses can be set off provided return is filed in time and set off. Then also you are uh, coming under less tax burden. And then afterwards, when you are in real prof uh, profit, when you are attracting, attracting tax, you may have to pay tax. Then after five years, six years, six, six, seventh year, three years, you can take tax benefits out of total 10 years. So this is a very, and uh, provided uh, you have to file a TIC, some form is there to claim these benefits and say uh, certain conditions are there. And uh, if you satisfy that, then you will be given three years tax relief benefit as a start of registration. And another uh, benefit is exemption from capital gain tax. This is there, how it is there, we'll have to, once you come under this uh, category, you will have to understand uh, your tax consultant will always advise you, but this benefit is there. Easy exit. This benefit is very complicated. If I will take it here, na, to it will be all mess. Now, easy exit through bankruptcy code means, uh, see, if you are forming, you may fail. Then uh, how to exit from that door? Exit is also very important because uh, you are registered at uh, startup portal, MCA portal, uh, corporate, uh, maybe after registration, was like everywhere you are registered. So to delete yourself from there or to revive something like that, anything, the bankruptcy code is there. Then uh, everything is uh, made very faster and easier with less conditions. You can have to. Then incubation centers to support startup across country. Means like Atmar Nirbhar, I think Pradeep ji, you are doing this business only. Yeah, yeah, centers. Really, it's so nice. Of course, uh, this is a, a really very good program. And this is launched by simply, it is launched by a startup uh, government only and whatever it is. But this is Atmanirbhar is uh, this kind of programs are being launched across India. So people can, so, uh, take, can take benefit who want to who are innovative, who want to come to into business, who want to start something, they can always learn basic, learn basic things from these learning programs. So it is so many benefits have been specifically designed and crafted for this startup. So this is what uh, all, uh, why uh, this was uh, important here only, huh, one more thing I forgot, this income tax benefit is only allowed to LLP and corporate, sir. Although three firm is can get itself registered, but uh, I had written somewhere. Uh, I have to make it clear. Uh, this income tax uh, relief of three years. I think firms are not allowed. Only company and LLPs are allowed. I will just uh, check. 
if uh, by the time it comes to my knowledge if any question is there please uh, ask me if i can i would try to uh, answer it otherwise i, I have finished uh, whatever i had prepared regarding the itrs and itr which itr will be applicable here uh, since llp company itr 5 days uh, 6 5 6 two itrs will be applicable to well registered startups is it clear sir yes yes just to adding uh, your presentation and your uh, discussion uh -huh. once we are actually uh, doing an uh, online once we are filing online yes there is a provision for online verification so all individuals or startups can go for uh, online verification either through digital signature yes. or through their accounts the uh, the um, current account or the same account <laughs> but they need to actually uh, go online through the online registration hmm. and then they need to actually verify it or otherwise other based uh, you know, verification is also there so yes. these three are necessary points whenever we are going for an online registration and my question why not? One, one thing this will come into picture when you will be finally filing online then online. automatically it will end through these procedures only. This procedure so, uh, given one OTP for Aadhaar verification also, and digital signature is there. Nothing is uh, to be done. Digital signature, up banana pata. It is little expensive. Sometimes in initial uh, years, people uh, don't go for that. So Aadhaar verification is there. But otherwise, firms or uh, in companies uh, uh, for companies and firms and LLP digital signature has but, to be there. Without that, but, they. Even they verify through their online registration, that is bank also. If they log in through the bank, they can verify it. Huh. Be because you have to always give your bank account number because in case of refund, they send in that account only which you have uh, provided to them. So it hmm. is all cross-checking. Yes. Cross -check. And just, just one verification. Uh, if we are saying that uh, startup is to be actually registered and getting the benefit up to 10 years. So suppose any any entity which is registered uh, in the year of 2010, so you mean to say it will be getting benefit up to 2030, 20 or yes. uh, how it is? But no, it is uh, started from 2016, first uh -huh. April, good. Uh, actually, uh, now I recollect, I, have, I haven't put it because in all of hurry, you know, yesterday you told me and yesterday I couldn't get time. So Night, post 2016. Both so, and, the organization is there, yeah. uh, they will be getting the benefit of this startup scheme. Yes, plus the uh, government has given waiver of this pandemic years also. Huh. One or two years they have given waiver. So it may extend up to even more 22,000. Uh, yeah, I think uh, in this budget they have declared 2027 up to. Okay. One year one more thing. waiver is just, there. Hmm. Just recollecting the budget. Uh, there was some discussion around that nowadays uh, individual or entities can actually file ITR uh, in club of two years. What was that discussion actually? Oh, pardon, pardon, what you are saying? Sorry. There was some discussion around that uh, entities can actually uh, do the ITR filing for two years in a club. Uh, together? Together. See, what uh, actually earlier this provision was there. Now from uh, onwards, uh, everything revised return. It is kind of revised return or belated return. There was time earlier, it used to be filing of return. There was time of up to up, uh, next year. I Means suppose this uh, year, uh, if I take example of 21 March, uh, 22 March, then March 23, it was allowed to file return with delay fees, with delay fees, 1,000, 10,000, whatever it may be. But now this has been indirectly abolished from last year budget only. Now they have uh, made this time, suppose September, uh, July is uh, your uh, non-audit file, uh, filing mm -hmm. is up to July. Then they have given maximum time up to 31st December only of the same year and uh, file for filing. Along with delay, means how much delay? July was due date and now you are uh, delaying. Uh, so you have to pay delay fees. Although, and last time permitted is only 31st December of that year only. And after that, you cannot file return. 
वो बाद में नोटिस से ही होगा ये बहुत झमेला भी कर दिया देखो दे मे रिलैक्स इट इन अपकमिंग बजट क्योंकि अभी बिकॉज ऑफ पेंडेमिक उस पर किसी का ध्यान ही नहीं गया बिकॉज ऑलरेडी अर्लियर ईयर ही एक्सटेंड हो रहा है अभी तो करंट प्रोविजन में तो अभी अब इस साल से वी विल बी लुकिंग फॉर दैट की अभी इसमें अगले बजट में इस रिलैक्सेशन को की बहुत अर्ली पीरियड कर दिया है अदरवाइज दिस प्रोविजन वॉज देयर वॉट यू आर सीन कि दो साल का एक साथ भी फिर क्या होता था इन नेक्स्ट ईयर मार्च 23 इन अकॉर्डिंग टू अर्लियर प्रोविजन हम मार्च 22 का भी डालते थे एंड मार्च 21 का भी डालते थे बट नाउ इट इज फ्रॉम लास्ट ईयर बजट इट हैज बीन डन अवे इट हैज बीन अबॉलिस्ड अबॉलिस्ड तो बड़ा मुश्किल होता है देयर यू मे दे गिव यू अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑफ बीइंग हर्ड उसमें हम रोग हुआ के कि वी कैन जस्टिफाई अवर सेल्फ इन रेयर केसेस दे परमिट डिले आल्सो सो एबॉलिश तो शब्द नहीं इट इज डन अवे बट यू नो फॉर दो थिंग्स यू विल हैव टू टेक दैट इज ऑल आई टोल्ड यू ऑडिट फाइलिंग एंड ऑल you have to be very specific a separate lecture is needed that is all income tax part ke lok ka kaam hai again take two more years two more yeah. hours and two more hours and that is not required as a learning of our learning ha and if you go has in mind ki what he is how he want to get himself to start business in out of those seven entities how you want to because individual can do small business but firms can do larger business company can do even big more than that so the nature of your your investment decide your status you have to go for your to usme kis mein jana and then in that case what return itr is applicable to him from 3 to 7 even i told you na charitable uh, companies and trust also may enter in entrepreneurship yes, anybody can enter business koi bhi kar sakta hai so those are returns may be applicable but in general 5 6 will be applicable and 3 to 6 i can say so thanks thanks ma'am uh, i request my id team to actually present a letter of gratitude for madam it was wonderful to hear that uh, madam have covered additionally what exactly the startup is usually uh, the speaker is coming with the only the topic today jamna madam cleared uh, regarding what are all those startups are uh, what is the benefit of the startup additionally she explained to us it's good and of course we we found that uh, what are all the types of the itrs are there we should file why so we should file and how to file this is a great we learning process for all the always for all the learners uh, and all the beginners those who are here and those who will be listening us uh, by way of our channel uh, in later stages thank you madam uh, firstly i request jamna ma'am please close your presentation so that my team can actually present a letter yeah, this ppt you want yeah, because yeah, it is made in very short form and all uh, do i need to give is like no no you you please close it close it here so yeah, that i uh, want to close it amrit Amrit, I want you. You know, I'm technically very uh, poor. We all, we all. I mean, stop this sharing, na. Huh. Ye me kar rahi hu. I'm. I was doing same thing, but not hitting properly. <laughs> it happens. It happens. We are not good in technology actually. And that's why I scared so much. We are born so in other, other, uh, other zone actually. The youngsters. Let me. I request you to present the letter of gratitude to me. Thank you, Madam, for being with us for supporting this drive on this day. And uh, thanks to my team uh, for supporting on this. Uh, just moving to our Pita Ji for the closing note, and thanks for the for. Uh, this uh, sixth week actually we have finished off the halfway of this incubation program and left over is again the six more weeks by that we will be ending up this three months of incubation program and the same thing uh, i am going to do it offline by this month in the session of this month we are going to do the offline to this incubation here in lucknow so you all are most welcome whenever you are in lucknow in any of the saturdays and sundays come down and have a uh, have a cup of tea with the uh, with an invite of a speaker also
let's see sir how much we can afford and uh, over to arbita ji thank you so much uh, for providing i once for again on behalf of my team and all the learners would like to thank jamna ji for her precious time for enlightening all of us and on such a brilliant topic and it it is important and i'm sure that uh, the informations and the tips that she has shared with all of us could be really helpful to all our future entrepreneurs and as you know that being thankful and expressing your gratitude is an important part of being happy in life thereby i would love to show my gratitude to all the pillars of my team who have given us support and contribution to start with let me thank the founder and the director of the prakramika dr gayatri narsimhan uh mandakni dr mandakni shukla from hasna foundation mr somnath mishra from sad digital myself from mind cube multi services private limited impulsive training center ms akshya narsimhan thankful to our organizers root to be and voice it out our social media partner atmanirbhar bharat learning platform and a wonderful creative team by impact and last and not the least thankful to the students of the university of avinash lingam and today's session i would like to quote one of the brilliant quote from mac jemson when he said never be limited by others people limited imaginations so please keep your imaginations on and fly with both the wings that i would love to say till then goodbye take care see you next week with the yet another brilliant topic thank you thank you thank, thank, you, you, thank you for this opportunity again to all of you thank, thank you. you shall i